Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I've got an educational video for you and this is the most frequently requested topic, which is warrants. This year is the year of the SPACs and there's a lot of money that can be made. But between the units, the shares and the warrants, people have a lot of questions. Well, today we're going to be talking about the warrants specifically for beginners. If you guys have been investing in them for a while and you feel like you really know what you're talking about, then this video might not be the best for you. But if you've had a lot of questions, and trust me, I've received a lot of questions about the warrants just follow this video it's going to answer all the basic questions so you understand when to use them and what exactly they do some of the topics that we're gonna be covering are what are warrants exactly and then the redemption price how long they last some of the risks and then cash versus cashless redemptions so I'm going to go into more details with all of these and answer some of the other questions but these are the main topics so please like and subscribe usually these videos aren't really uh, don't gain a lot of traction so it would be very nice if you guys liked it and kind of shared it if you know someone that needs this information and that kind of shows me that people actually enjoy this type of content so let's get started now thank you for watching All right, guys, so let's get started with the basics. When it comes to SPACs, there are shares, units, and warrants. Today, we're only going to focus on the warrants. And what are they? Well, they give you the option, but not the obligation, of purchasing shares from the company for a certain price. Now, they are very similar to call options, but a little bit different. When it comes to call options, you would actually redeem shares from another investor. When it comes to warrants, you're redeeming shares right from the company itself. So you're you're basically paying the company to get some shares from them in exchange for your warrants. Usually the warrants are exchanged for $1150, but not always the case. When it comes to a company like PSTH, Pershing Square Tontine Holdings, then everything is doubled and the redemption is $23, but usually it's $1150. And also, when it comes to the uh, ratio of warrants to shares, it's usually one warrant to one share. So if you have 100 warrants, then you could be uh, converting them into 100 shares at $11.50 per warrant. Now, again, that's not always the case. If you think of a company like Graph, Velodyne, for them, the ratio was four to three. So you would need four warrants to get three shares. So again, I'll show you where you can find all of this information. You'll have to like do your own research for every single SPAC that you look at. Of course, you can look online to find more details or when I talk about them in the videos, but you will have to look into the filings to see the specifics for your SPAC. Now, what's the main benefit of the warrants versus actually just buying shares? Well, the main one is that you get leverage and lower risk. So by leverage, I mean that when you buy shares for $12, Right? For every share, you have to spend $12. Well, the warrants are much cheaper. At that same time that the shares are $12, the warrants might be $2.50 or $3. Well, that means that you'll be able to buy more exposure to that stock for the same amount of money in your account. So let's say that the stock's at $12 and the warrants are $3. Well, at that time, you can buy four warrants, right? So four options to buy those shares for the price of one stock. So you have more leverage, right? As the stock goes up, your warrants are going to go up and gain value faster. But at the same time, you're risking less per share because if you buy 100 shares at $12, then you're into the stock for 1200, as opposed to if you're buying the option of purchasing these stocks for 1150 each, then you would be into it for $300. So if it goes up, right, there's unlimited potential, but if things don't go your way and it really crashes, well then your capped loss is that $300 versus 1200 for someone that goes with shares. So they both have pros and cons as we'll talk about in this video, but that tells you the really, really basic information as to how they work. So where do you find all of this information? Well, go into Google and type in the name of your SPAC plus filings, something like this. Now, one of the first results is going to be the SEC. Click on it. If you scroll down, find the S1 document. 
you're just going to click on it then it's going to bring this document up which has all the information about the SPAC right you should be researching this every time but if you keep going down you'll see something like this this tells you that they're trying to raise two hundred eighty-seven million five hundred thousand dollars and as you scroll down you'll find all the information now I want you to scroll down to the section that's talking about the warrants in this case for this SPAC they say that there's going to be nine nineteen million two hundred fifty thousand outstanding warrants so that tells you the pool of warrants that's going to be in the market so you're going to be buying some of those now exercisability tells you what's the ratio so each whole warrant is exercisable to purchase one share of our class a common stock so this one is one to one right so it's not like graph four to three or ten to one this one is each warrant lets you get one share and the exercise price is 1150. So let's say that you have 100 warrants. It gives you the option of buying 100 shares. And to do that, it's going to cost you 1150 per share. All right, so next we'll look at your cost basis if you were to exercise your warrants and redeem them for shares. So we'll talk about them in terms of premium versus discount. And if you guys watch my videos every week, you know that I often talk about arbitrage opportunities. Well, this is what I mean. What is your cost basis? It's going to be the price that you paid for the warrants plus the price that we saw in the document, which is often 1150. So in this case, if you paid two dollars right for the warrants, then you would add that to 1150. That would mean that your redeemable value right the cost basis that you would have would be 1350 but is that a good deal or a bad deal well that really depends on what the share price is going to be when the warrants become exercisable which is about 30 days after the merger in that case what you're going to do is you're going to compare your redeemable value what your cost basis would be with what you anticipate the price of the shares are going to be so let's say that your cost basis is 1350 and you anticipate that the price of the stock is going to be $12 well then you would have had a bad deal you would have paid a premium of $1.50 now that's not good in that case you would have just you should have bought shares instead of warrants but it's not always the case very frequently the price of the warrant plus 1150 is actually smaller than the current price of the shares so in that case if you're into this stock long term and you just want to buy and hold it then it makes more sense to buy the warrants convert them and then you get a discount which is also called the arbitrage so let's say that the discount is five dollars well then you can say that you have a five dollar arbitrage opportunity and i'm going to show you examples now so here's an example. This is CCXX, which as of me filming this is going to be voting on the merger fairly soon. So this company is trading at 1025 right now and the warrants are trading at $2. So is this a good deal? Are you getting a premium or a discount if you buy warrants right now? Well, what you're going to do is first you have to look at what's the ratio. And I looked it up already. It's one to one ratio and the redeemable price is 1150. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the warrant price, $2, and you're going to add the 11 50 which gives you a redeemable value of 1350 then you compare it with the current price of 1025 and you can see that you pay a significant premium for the warrants right now however they're not exercisable yet they're going to be exercisable in about 30 days after the merger so we don't know what the price is going to be at that time right maybe at that time the stock price is going to go up tremendously and it's going to be a discount on the warrants but for now you know that they you're paying a premium if you buy the warrants so another example, which would be the total opposite, is Hylion, ticker symbol SHLL. So in this case, you would get a significant discount by buying the warrants instead of the shares. So as of me filming this after hours, the shares are at 5025 and the warrants are at 2530. So in this case, if you add 1150, then you get a redeemable price of 3680, which is a significant discount over the current after hours price of 5025. So if you're not too concerned about the risks which I'll talk about in later on in the video right the the movement in the next few weeks of the share price well if you were only going to buy shares right now that you want to hold long term well it would make sense to go with the warrants wait until you can exercise them get your shares and then you would get a significant discount your cost basis would be the 3680 versus if you were to buy today your shares would be at 5025. so i hope you guys understand this right this is the arbitrage opportunity that i was talking about and right now it's pretty severe this is about 14 dollars difference 
So one last example is going to be UTS, which already merged. So in this case, as we can see, as we get closer to when the warrants can be exercisable, that arbitrage opportunity is going to shrink and there's going to be equilibrium where the warrant plus 1150 becomes the same amount or approximately as a share price. So in this case, the share price is 1790. And if we go with the UTS warrant at 654, if you add 1150 to them, you get 1804, which as I mentioned, is almost the same as as the uh, share price. So that arbitrage opportunity shrinks as time goes on, and then either the warrant goes up or the, sh the price of the shares has to come down to reach that equilibrium. Usually it's going to be a little, a little bit of both and they're going to kind of meet in the middle. So now that we're talking about timing, I figured I'd mention it here. This is what we were talking about earlier. One of the main questions that people ask all the time is when can these warrants actually be exercised? And usually it's about 30 days after the merger. So I'm referring you back to the S1 we were looking at earlier for Spartacus, right? A new SPAC. Well, exercise period, right? If you look 30 days after the completion of our initial business combination. So this is when you could exercise these warrants if you were buying them for this company. As usual, you want to look at the file for the SPAC you're trying to buy warrants for. All right, guys, this is absolutely crucial. You need to pay attention to this because this is something you absolutely need to know. How long do the warrants last? So as we just saw, in theory, 30 days after the merger happens, you have the option of exercising your warrants to redeem shares, but you're not forced to. It's an option. You're not obligated to. In theory, you have up to five years to do so. But here's the problem is that in almost all of the SPACs, they have a provision in the document that says that if the share price trades above a certain amount, usually $18, for 20 trading days out of 30, they have the option of calling all the warrants due. They just don't want to have these warrants floating around for years so if the share price is above a certain amount they're just going to call them due if you don't exercise your warrants when they force you to they're just going to be worthless after that you won't have the option of redeeming them so this has happened before people have lost money with it so that's why i'm stressing it out so much especially if the share price is above 18 dollars. this is something you need to pay attention to so this is what it looks like in the document redemption of warrants once the warrants become exercisable, we may redeem the outstanding warrants if and only if the reported last sale price of the Class A common stock equals or exceeds $18 per share for any 20 trading days within 30 trading day period. So there you have it, guys. They, they spell it out in the document, right? They can force you to exercise your shares. So you need to pay attention to it, but they will give you a 30 day period where, I mean, they are, they're going to tell you ahead of time that you have to do it. All right, so we have one last thing to talk about when it comes to how long the warrants last and goes back to our discussion earlier about paying a premium or getting a discount. So what about a stock like CCXX that's currently trading at 1025, but the warrants at $2? Does that mean that you should never buy warrants? No, not necessarily. There is a good case to be made, and that is if you're bullish on the company long term, but in the short term, you're really not sure what it's going to do. So let's say that you're not sure in the next three months, is the stock going to go to $9 after the merger, or is it going to go to $14, but not really spike to $25, $30, like one of the other meme stocks. But that doesn't mean that you don't believe in the company. What if you think that in two years, the company is going to be $25? It's going to have a lot of growth. It's going to be well established big investors are going to pour in and like buy a lot of shares well in that case like this it could make sense to buy some warrants short term and pay that premium and then you have that long-term exposure to the stock because since it's under $18 it's, it's not going to get called by the company so you have two years three years four years five years for this stock to actually go up significantly and you have exposure to it so you don't necessarily want to invest your 1025 per share because because you're not really sure that it's going to go up quickly, but at the same time, you want to have exposure to it. Well, that is when it would make sense for you to buy some warrants and then you have exposure to share price if it goes up over time. All right, guys, next up, we've got what are some of the main risks involved with investing in warrants? So warrants are speculative. You can lose some money. And here are some of the risks. The first one I can think of is if you're not selecting your stocks correctly, well, after the merger, the stocks can just crash and it's going to pull your warrants down significantly. And this isn't actually uncommon. After the merger, it's very frequent for SPACs to drop significantly. And HOFV is an example of that that merged a couple months ago. And now the stock price 
price is at 249 as of me filming this and the warrants are 26 cents so if you bought this at the peak when the warrants were maybe two dollars and something well now you're facing an 80 90 percent loss and is it going to come back within the next five years it's possible but i mean that's a lot of risk and very low reward for you so this is the type of thing that you have to be careful like just because it's a spac doesn't mean that it's going to skyrocket same for the warrants the warrants are great when it's going up but when it's going down it's not going to help you so that's the first risk you still need to be very careful about the stocks that you invest in number two pre-merger the shares have built-in protection that the warrants don't have so all the SPACs have money in their trust account that the money is supposed to go to the acquisition target when they find one and they end up merging but if for some reason the merger doesn't go through or they can't find an acquisition target, then the money gets redistributed to the shareholders proportionally. So it's $10 plus the interest that they collected over time. So really, let's say that that amounts to $10.30. Well, if you bought your shares for $11, you're really only risking $0.70 cents pre-merger. Uh, pre and also, let's say that the stock price goes to $9. Well, again, you could just vote against the merger, right? Say that it's overpriced, and then you would redeem your shares for $10 plus the interest. So even though the share went down, you could just be protected. You have downside protection. Well, you don't have that with the warrants. With the warrants, if the merger doesn't go through for whatever reason, then your warrants are worthless. So that's the big risk with them. You have to make sure that it's a serious company and that there's no like thing that's going to make the merger fail. You need this to go through or your warrants just lose all of their value. And then a third risk is that as we get closer to the date where the warrants become exercisable, which is usually 30 days after the merger, well, the problem is that often the share price is going to drop significantly as people anticipate that all of these warrant holders are going to be exercising and that's going to dilute the stock. So this is something that you have to pay attention to as well. It's great that in theory, as we saw before, like with some of the examples, often there's an arbitrage opportunities and you can get a discount. But if the stock price drops too much, right, and the warrants are too expensive, you pay too much for them, well, then something that could have been a discount actually becomes a premium. You might have overpaid for them. So if this is a third risk, right? It's very, very difficult to anticipate what the stock price is going to be when the warrants become exercisable. But this is something you have to keep in mind. In a case like Hylion that I showed earlier that has $16 in arbitrage opportunities, well, I mean, that gives you a lot of leeway. But if it was $5, well, then it's very possible that you would have been overpaying if you bought those warrants to exercise them as shares. Now, remember, if you're a long-term buy and hold investor and you don't care about what happens in the next couple of weeks, right? You just want to hold for the next several years. Well, then it doesn't matter because if you were to buy them today for a certain price, but you can buy them cheaper with the warrants, then that's always going to be the better uh, option. But if you're concerned with the short-term price movement, then this might be a risk for you. So we've covered a lot of ground, but there's another question that people ask is cash versus cashless redemption. So throughout this video, I've talked about the 1150 cash redemption price, but that's only one of the options that the companies give themselves. They also give themselves the op opportunity of doing cashless redemptions. So here's the main difference. In a cash redemption, you're going to be giving them 1150 per warrant and in exchange, they'll trade it one to one for a share. But in a cashless redemption, let's say that the company doesn't need to raise more money and they don't want to dilute the shares as much but what they can do is instead of trading one-to-one -one, right because you're not giving them an extra 1150 they'll just give you a proportion of shares based on the average share price in the last 10 days or 20 days or whatever is specified in the document minus like the redemption price and they'll they'll give you a proportion of shares so instead of being a one to one it might be a 0 0.5 to one or 0 0.6 to one so because of that because you only get a fraction it's going to dilute the share pool a little bit less so the real formula is a little bit more complicated i'll just list it in the description so you guys can do it if you're really interested in this you'll be able to calculate exactly how many shares you'd get 
All right, in the close, let's answer two basic questions that people have asked me very frequently. So the first one is, hey, Patrick, now I know all about warrants, but where are they? I can't even find them. So sadly, in some platforms, especially Robinhood, you can't trade warrants. So this is Hylion, right? The ticker symbol on Robinhood is SHLL Plus, and they do have it in the system, but as you can see, it says this stock is not supported on Robinhood. If you go in the search bar and you type SHLL, it's only going to show you the shares so they don't want you to trade it they discontinued the warrants a while ago so if this is something that's important to you you're going to have to use another brokerage so a lot of other brokerages allow warrants e-trade is one of them that's the one i use but fidelity allows it and many others so another question people ask frequently is Okay, so it's been 30 days after the merger. Now they're exercisable. How do I get my shares if I want to redeem them? Well, what you're going to have to do is contact your broker and tell them exactly what you want. And what they're going to do is they'll contact the company and do the process for you. And then after a few days, the shares are going to be put in your account. So for E-Trade, they charge a $38 fee. Right? They call it a voluntary action. And as I mentioned, all you have to do is contact them, tell them what you want to do, and they'll do the process for you. So guys, I hope I answered a lot of your questions. If you have more, please list them in the comments or send me a private message and I'll try to explain a little bit more. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this answered a lot of your questions and just let me know what you guys think. If you enjoy this type of content, please like. It's really going to help me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.